Behind me is the 2024 Hyundai i30 sedan hybrid, a car that I've really been looking forward to driving. And the only reason I've been looking forward to driving this is because my personal car is a Corolla sedan hybrid. And this Corolla is the biggest competition for this i30. I've had my car for about six or seven months now and I really enjoy it and I love the fuel economy and the comfort that it provides. So it will be interesting to see how this i30 compares because trying to beat the Corolla at its own game is going to be a really tough challenge for this i30 sedan hybrid. So the hybrid version has actually been around in other countries and other markets for a few years now, but it's only just arriving here in Australia and it coincides with the 2024 facelift uh, of the i30 sedan. So we've got this lovely restyled front end uh, with the flatter Kiando badge on the front of the uh, uh, sort of bonnet there we do get it's currently only available in the entry level specification and there'll be two further models coming later throughout the year uh, so if you want something a little bit fancier uh, wait a few months and you'll be able to get something with a bit more specification but even in, on this entry level model we still get some nice things like front and rear parking sensors and rear camera we've got 16 inch alloy wheels we've got full led headlights so as a base model we still get some decent specification the only one thing that does confuse me a little bit is around the key. You've actually got to press the button to unlock the doors and then actually put the key in the ignition to start the car. Something even on a base model you expect to have keyless entry and push button start these days. The Corolla Hybrid certainly does, which I know because I've got one. So the hybrid powertrain in this i30 is a 1.6 litre petrol engine with obviously a battery and an electric motor. The total power output is 104 kilowatt and 265 newton meters. It's front wheel drive and it's got a six speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, which is a little bit different from the Toyota. That's got a 1.8 liter petrol engine, but a CVT continuously variable transmission. So a little bit different. Interestingly, they both claim 3.9 liters per 100 kilometers uh, of fuel efficiency. The car itself comes with a five year warranty, which is unlimited mileage and the battery gets an eight year, 160,000 uh, warranty as a separate thing. The servicing for this car is every 12 months or 15,000 Ks, and over a five year period, it costs you $2,150 to service. Now that's actually quite a lot more than the Toyota Corolla. Over a five year period, it would only cost you $1,225. The warranty for the Toyota is five years as well, but Toyota will extend it for another two years assuming you've done all your logbook servicing at a main Toyota dealership. They'll also give you a 10 year warranty on the battery, assuming you've had an annual check for the battery. Um, so it does beat the Hyundai a little bit in those areas. Looking at the back of the i30 sedan, um, again, the rear end has been restyled uh, for 2024, like the front end. Um, yeah, it's pretty sort of inoffensive. Standard taillights, they still haven't got full LED on the back of these things. Um, the only telltale sign this is the hybrid is the little badge here on the boot lid. Um, to open the boot, there's a button on the key which you can just press and hold. And that will open the boot for you. It actually opens up to a pretty decent amount of space, 474 litres, which is four more than the equivalent Corolla. Uh, they've both got 60-40 split fold rear seats, so it can be just as practical as a hatchback or a wagon. In terms of pricing versus the Corolla, this is currently 35990 dollars drive away. Um, this particular car has got metallic paint, which is called Echotronic Grey, um, so that takes it up to about $36,500. The equivalent Corolla with metallic paint is about $600 more, so they're really in the same ballpark in terms of cost as well. So let's have a look inside this new i30 sedan hybrid then. Uh, as I said, no keyless entry, a uh, bit of a shame even on a base model. When we step inside though, the interior is familiar if you've driven a new model i30. And the seats are really, really comfortable. They're almost as sporty as what you get in the i30 sedan N. It's got a lovely bolster in here at the sides and also around the ribcage area. Uh, you can hear the engine has just kicked into life. Uh, so I've turned everything on so we can have a look at the dashboard. Um, it's fairly quiet, which isn't too bad. Uh, so hopefully it's not picking up too much on the audio of this video. So this is the view from the driving seat. It's nice to see we've actually got a leather steering wheel, something you don't get on the Toyota Corolla, the Corolla one is just plastic and feels a little bit cheap. Um, so it's nice, this is actually proper leather, uh, makes you feel a little bit more upmarket. 
Uh, in terms of buttons, we've got things like the volume uh, and sort of track selection over here. Uh, obviously phone button as well. And on the right hand side uh, is things like your adaptive cruise control and your lane keeping aid, uh, which you do have to turn off every time you get in the car because it's very intrusive and it can also be a little bit annoying. Uh, the dashboard in front of the driver uh, is digital. Let me just zoom in for that for you a little bit. So there's the dash there. Uh, pretty straightforward, as you can see. We've got the speedo over there on the left-hand side. On the right, we've got the rev counter. Uh, in the middle, there's a section which you can change depending on what you actually want to see. I've currently got it on the trip computer. Um, if we flick through, we can see... So in the week I've been driving this car, uh, I've averaged 4.4 litres per 100 kilometres, which is roughly what I get out of my Toyota Corolla. So it is very sort of comparable. Uh, in the centre of the dash, uh, we've got the infotainment display. It doesn't have built-in sat-nav, so you've got to rely uh, on Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which thankfully both of those are wireless, so that's really good to see. Um, you can also look at things like sort of hybrid information there, so it tells you whether um, the car is using the engine or the battery or a combination of the both, uh, and also your average fuel consumption. Um, so that's a nice little bit of information there as well. Uh, coming down from there, we've got the controls for the dual zone climate control, which is really nice to see. And then underneath, we've got all the charging options there. So we've actually got a wireless charging pad, something which you don't get in the Toyota Corolla. You have to plug in your phone to charge. Uh, we've also got, as you can see, two charging points there and also a 12 volt power socket. Uh, so coming back behind that, we've got the gear stick uh, for the six speed dual clutch transmission. Uh, then we've got the buttons there, we've got the drive mode, so like your normal Eco Sport, uh, normal. Uh, the button behind that is for the camera, then the button behind that is for the parking sensors. Uh, we've then got an electronic parking brake with an auto hold function. Uh, again, something that they also get in the Toyota Corolla. The one thing I really don't like about i30 interiors, mainly on the sedan obviously, is this big sort of handle here. It feels like it really separates the driver and the passenger and it makes it feel a bit claustrophobic for the passenger. Uh, my partner certainly mentioned that when she was in the car the other day um, and said, yeah, it just feels a bit kind of bulky and kind of in the way. Uh, we do get a couple of cup holders here just behind the gear stick uh, and then a nice bit of storage there under the centre armrest. The overall layout of the car is really nice though. The interior feels really nice. It's fairly basic in here, but you've got all the main bits and pieces that you need. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite a nice place to be. So as you can see, getting into the back of the i30 was actually really easy. Uh, the rear door opens nice and wide. You do have to duck your head a little bit so you don't hit it on the uh, top of the door. Um, but other than that, getting in is actually quite easy. We've got acres of leg space back here, and I can just about get my feet under the driver's seat. So stretching out your legs on a long journey is gonna be nice and easy. It's nice to see we get rear air vents back here as well, which strangely you don't get on the Corolla sedan. We've also got two USB fast charging points as well, which is nice to see. We've then got the typical fold down center armrest with a couple of cup holders, and then also the ISOFIX mounting points for child seats. The actual seats themselves are nice and comfortable. Could probably do with a slightly different angle so you get a little bit more under leg support. But I think some of that is because the battery is uh, underneath the rear seats for the hybrid system. Headroom isn't too bad. I'm okay, but I'm only five foot six. Someone much taller than me would struggle and obviously hit their head on the ceiling. But as a place to be, it's actually quite nice back here. Visibility is decent out the side windows, probably because you do sit a little bit higher. And you can also see nicely out the front as well. Having the lighter headlining just makes the car feel quite spacious inside as well. It also feels slightly bigger inside in this i30 than the Corolla. Not by a lot, it's probably only centimetres in it, um, but it just gives that impression of being slightly bigger inside. So this is the part of the review I'm most looking forward to and sharing with you, is the drive of this car. I want to see how it compares to my Toyota Corolla sedan hybrid. Um, particularly in the way the hybrid systems or switches between electric and petrol, uh, how some of the gear changes are, 
and obviously fuel economy. So let's get on the road and check all those features out. One of the first things I've noticed driving this new i30 hybrid is when you sort of initially pull away from a standstill, it's how long it will actually stay in fully electric mode for. It actually feels like it stays in fully electric slightly longer than my Corolla. Um, I'm here there and doing 41 kilometers uh, an hour now, and it's still in fully electric mode, uh, which is actually quite impressive. The ride is really comfortable, even though this sedan hasn't been tuned in Australia, uh, like a lot of other Hyundai models. As I showed you earlier, my average has been 4.4 litres per hundred throughout the week I've been driving the car. A lot of that is down to a fair amount of time I've spent on the freeway, because uh, that obviously brings your average down. It doesn't seem to like the stop-start traffic on my way to work, though. Uh, the best I've managed going to work is about 5.9, whereas in my Corolla, it's regularly around sort of 4.5, 4.6 on my commute to work. If you get a nice clear run though without any stop start traffic or having to stop at traffic lights this car is really really fuel efficient uh, which is obviously the main reason people would buy one the seats that i mentioned earlier are really comfortable i do like the extra bolster when you get down the side uh, they do feel like they sort of hug you in a little bit more than the seats in the corolla do as well which is actually quite nice one of the things or one of my favorite things about this i30 one of the things i'm not so keen on is when it switches from just electric uh, and the engine, you know, the petrol engine sort of kicks in. I don't think it's quite as smooth as the Toyota is. But then, you know, Toyota have been making hybrid drivetrains for well over 20 years now, so they've mastered it. Um, it's still a good effort from the company, don't get me wrong. But you can feel it sometimes when the engine kicks in, there's a little bit of uh, sort of disturbance there. And the gearbox isn't quite as smooth as one in the Corolla either. You do get the sort of typical sort of jerkiness of a dual clutch gearbox sometimes. The one benefit of the dual clutch gearbox though is that it doesn't rev really high when you put your foot down like the CVT gearbox in the Corolla. It actually goes through the gears like a normal gearbox does um, in just a normal petrol car. And like a lot of all other new Hyundais, you get a lot of safety equipment on this new i30 sedan some of it is a little bit over the top and a bit annoying certainly the speed zone recognition is very oversensitive um, and it also reads things like the 40 kilometers an hour speed sign through school zones even when it's like school holidays it doesn't obviously know the difference so it gets really annoying every time you get in the car i personally switch that off just because i find it quite irritating uh, the same goes for the lane key paint as well I find that a bit sensitive so when I get in the car, I switch those two items off, um, and then I'm you know, sort of quite happy as I'm driving along. This base model also doesn't get built-in satellite navigation, and then that also means that you don't get the Blue Link connected services as well. So you don't get the app on your phone where you can do things like remote start your car, lock and unlock your doors, turn on the air conditioning, um, which you do get in my Toyota Corolla, um, which I actually do like. Uh, I love being able to start the car, turn on the aircon in the summer, uh, and just cool the cabin down before I get in the car. But it's also nice because it reminds me if I forgot to lock my car and left the doors open um, and things like that, which is quite useful because sometimes I'm a bit forgetful. The higher specification models uh, coming later this year will have built-in satellite navigation, so then you will get that Blue Link system. Um, yeah, on the other models. So if that's your thing, wait a little bit later in the year, get the Elite or the Premium. Uh, they'll get the built-in sat-nav uh, and also the Blue Link system. The engine noise is definitely vocal when it kind of kicks in um, from just being pure electric. But that's no different to the Toyota, really. So it's kind of similar in that respect. You do get a little bit of road noise as well. But again, that can depend on the road surface. Um, and it's again no different to the Toyota. It's a very comfortable car to drive though, and you can definitely fit five adults in here, although in the back they wouldn't obviously be with six foot adults, but it's certainly comfortable enough to take five people. So there you have it then. That's my thoughts and opinions on the 2024 Hyundai i30 sedan hybrid. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. 
If you have, give it a like and share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. If you've got any questions about this car, feel free to leave them in the comment section for me below and I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. But I'd also like to know, would you choose this i30 or would you get a Corolla? I'm sure this i30 is going to give the Corolla a good challenge, particularly when they're so closely matched in specification and pricing. Uh, it's good to see a bit of competition in the small sedan hybrid market. And that just leaves me to say thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you all soon in the next one.